If your last year sucked, the game plan I'm about to share in this video is going to really help you going forward. You know, at the beginning of every year, yes, I do set goals, but I like to think of life in terms of four main buckets. Now those four buckets are health, if it's a problem, because it stops everything if you can't be healthy, your work or career purpose, relationships, and what I call experiences, ventures, and memories. I wanna share how I break down my strategic approach to making sure this next year is the best of your life, especially if the last one has not been very good. What's up guys, it's Alex Hine, author of Master of the Day. Let's jump in and talk about what those four buckets are right now. So basically, I like to think of having a great year as having a high level, four main buckets. One of the main ones that's the most important to me that I really think about first is what are the adventures, experiences, and memories I want to have? Because if you're like me, you look back at the end of the year and the day-to-day -day you just forget. You go to your job, you do your commute, you walk your dog. The day-to-day -day aspects of life, you forget because it's typically all the same. They're not peak moments. When it comes to memories in life, why is it that people say things like, getting married was the best day of my life, or the birth of my first child was the best thing of my life, or getting that book deal was the best day of my life? Why do they say that? It's because it's not something that happens every day and the emotional intensity of it has a powerful effect in terms of how you wire and encode memories in your brain. I start with what are the experiences I want to have. Now for me at this point in my life I'm very lucky because I'm self-employed I typically take one vacation once a season. This year I've thought about my core experiences are going to be a trip in the first quarter of the year I went down to Mexico for a healing retreat. The trip in the second quarter of the year in a month I leave to walk the Camino de Santiago for three weeks. The third quarter of the year I'm going to Iceland with family and the fourth quarter of the year, I haven't figured that out yet. My life is oriented around what are the memories that I really want to look back on. If I don't remember anything about this year, what are the memories that will make this an amazing year that I'm so excited that I had? I just have a little fund in my bank account just called Adventure Capital. It just basically shunts in a couple hundred bucks every single month and that becomes my adventure fund for the quarter. So when we go to the health bucket, the thing number one for me is really sleep, mood, and energy. So I'm always thinking like, is health a barrier to me living my life the way I want effectively? If it isn't, then fine. Maybe just keep doing what you're doing. But for me, I know, during tough years of my life or when things are stressful, I tend not to sleep well. So for me, I put down for my main health goal, sleep well every single night. And there's a whole list of habits and list of things I can do that will actually allow me to sleep well every night. Things like eating earlier, things like not working past six, things like just having more fun. All of those help me sleep better. But in general, for the health quadrant, if there's something that's really causing you pain, focus on that. And if it's otherwise okay, then maybe you're fine in that quadrant. The other one that's not doing great because I don't prioritize it is really the relationships quadrant. So for me, the way I view relationships is you basically have like your friends, your family, community, and who you're dating or who you're married to or not. So the way I'm thinking about this quadrant, because, you know, I moved to Los Angeles a few years ago, I moved to the peak of the pandemic, didn't have a big friend group, still really don't. And so what I've decided is for making this friend quadrant better than it's ever been, I'm going to do two main things. One is I'm going to host a dinner every two weeks and I'm just going to reach out to maybe 50% new people every single time so that new people are coming in, they're meeting me, they're meeting each other, and it's a way of connecting people. The second one is this great, great, great ritual I've done in every city that I've moved. I read this amazing LinkedIn article about getting 255 coffee meetings in one year. How this guy built like an instant network as he called it. For me, it's for an instant friend group. So basically what I do is for an entire quarter or year if I have to, the goal is to get one coffee meeting five days a week. It could be coffee, it could be a phone call, it could be dinner, it could be whatever. But the point is to connect with one person that could be a friend, could be an advisor, could be a business something, could be someone you date eventually, but to connect with that many people one-on-one. -on -one. And so I kept a little nerdy spreadsheet in Evernote of quarter one, January, February, March, I met these 50 people. And then I just write down like, keep in contact, don't keep in contact. So I found that if I go to anywhere in the world that I've now moved to and I have no social ties, if I just set the goal of 255 coffee meetings that year, typically three months, not even a year, I will have people to do things with. I will have dinners on the schedule. It will not be this lonely thing that people get into for years and years and years. Steal that 255 coffee meeting habit. It is one of the best. Now, when it comes to some of the work stuff, the way I'm thinking about this year is really always oriented in kind of like the spiral. At the center of the spiral is always, what do I actually want to be doing? What's actually exciting me? And I've written down two main things. Number one is I'm writing a new book, this book on medicine and on healing. That's really the number one thing that's exciting me to find an agent and to get a very specific book advance. Number two really is just growing the business, right? Increasing revenue, increasing how much I pay myself. I mean, I still have student debt. 
So there's a lot that I've got to work on there. The core, I think the nucleus of your life always has to be what fascinates you and motivates you. If your core nucleus of life is not what excites you, then it's by definition what doesn't excite you. And we all know the feeling of interacting with someone who's not excited about life. Probably been on a date with someone who's like a dead fish. You can tell they don't like their job, they're not that healthy, they're not that excited about life, and you know how that feels just being around that person. For me, what's really exciting me? Writing my new book, growing the business on the financial side, and then everything else around that, I try my best to not do as much as possible. Now, how does this apply to you? I mean, for example, you might think, if I'm not self-employed, how do I do this? What are the three activities you most enjoy doing in your life that give you energy, that give you the feeling of excitement? It may mean, you love every single night to go out after work and get drinks or a meal with your buddies because that's a hell of a lot more enjoyable than going home at seven o'clock for the next five hours and watching TV. Or maybe you've decided that you've got this nine to five job and the days where you're working on your side hustle with the hope that one day you can quit, eventually those three days where you're working on the side hustle, those give you energy. Protecting whatever those things are that excite you the most in your life and making sure you do them as close to daily as possible. That becomes your nucleus of what fascinates me and what motivates me in my life. So let's go through this really useful journaling exercise and I'll show you exactly how I do this. This is also based on the same exact free best year ever worksheet. It's the first link below this video. Check it out and download it because this breaking down of your year based on vision, based on your quarterly habits, your quarterly projects, your goals and your daily habits is exactly what we're gonna talk about here. So download that and check it out. But here's the gist of exactly how I organize the year. I'll give you my two main buckets that I'm focusing on in my work life, mastery of my craft. If you don't know, I'm a doctor of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine. I have a private clinic in Los Angeles. If you guys haven't seen my other channel on healing with traditional Chinese medicine, check it out. Mastery of my craft, medicine is number one, and mastery of the other craft, being a good business owner is number two. Those are the two areas where I need increased skills. So basically, I go through my quarters. And first thing at the top, of course, is quarterly experience and quarterly trip. Because remember, my orientation in life is always around what excites and motivates. Because it is a long journey, life. And if you can't stay motivated, it's gonna be very, very tough. Easiest way is just to do what you love and figure out the rest. Then we go basically into what are my quarterly goals? For you, it might be different. It might be that you're trying to be a YouTuber. So it may mean studying the game of YouTube or video production. Or maybe you're an artist and working on your craft is the fundamental piece you have to do daily. A musician, a singer songwriter, whatever it is, your craft you need to work on daily and the business side daily. The way I break it down is what I call daily mastery. And for the first 90 minutes of every day, I go to a cafe from 7.30 until nine, and I work on my number one thing, which is my number one skill to improve is medical mastery. Now I just pick one specific thing for a season. So let's say for example, I have lots of people coming in and I'm realizing, oh, I'm not getting the best results with my patients that come in with autoimmune disease. January, February, March, the first quarter of the year, First 90 minutes of every day, I'm studying autoimmune disease in a cafe. So that is my skill acquisition for that quarter. And on the business side, it may be, okay, I need to learn how to create online programs that people love, or I need to create better YouTube videos. The other hour of the night, I'm going to be studying, like, how do I make better YouTube videos? Is it the intro? Is it the editing style? Does my team have to do more post-production? What does that actually look like? You're improving the skill set on both sides. So we talked about your quarterly experiences. And again, it doesn't have to be as big as international travel. It could be go do a tough mutter. It could be so many different things. Do something that is memorable because life is short. And then we got into the daily process. For me, there are two skills I have to acquire in my workspace, mastery of my craft and mastery of being a business owner. For you, if it's athletics, find that hour or 90 minutes every day. And on the other side is, what other skill set you may have to acquire. I basically always figure out what do I have to learn to get to the next level. For example, in the concept of traditional Chinese medicine, I have to take CEUs just like a physician to maintain my license in the state that I'm in. So what I have to do is take a certain number of CEUs credits and then submit them and save them to my board. Basically every quarter I pick, what is something I really wanna learn, a condition I need to focus and hone in on more like autoimmune disease, or what is something that I just always have been curious about. Figure out what is the quarterly workshop or skill set or seminar or online program to go through to improve your skills in that domain. Now, once you've gone through this four part phase for setting your year and getting the intentions, right? First is the experiences, the memories you want. Then we talk about a little bit of the vision and then we broke it down into your daily process, your daily time blocks for skill acquisition or doing the work, right? And then the other time for actually acquiring skills that you have to improve. We talked about your daily process, when to do it, for how long. Then we talked about a quarterly workshop, resource, book, online program, 
something that can help you get better in the pursuit of your goals. Final step is I just do a little quarterly review. So then at the end of the quarter, basically I go back through and I look at the process of like, what is it that I actually have to work on? Products and my next book and it's saying, my daily rituals and my content 10X. What can we do to make better videos? I go back and I review the process. Did it work? Did it not work? What do we have to improve? And I start all over again at the next quarter. What experience is exciting me so that after this whole quarter of pushing, I'm looking forward to it. And then we reverse engineer the entire year from there. So I hope that helps you guys. Again, that free best year ever goal setting worksheet below the video should probably help. It has a lot of fill in the blanks for the vision you want to achieve, the quarterly goals or experiences, and then the daily rituals most likely to make that happen. Check it out. You might also like this related video right on this same topic of having and really designing your best year right here.